make it do it makes us honor better faster stronger Join me, Dr. Richard Harris, as we strive to unlock the secrets of the human body. Strive for wellness, strive for great health. Follow the show on iTunes, Spotify, Google and Android, and Patreon. Welcome to this episode of the Strive for Great Health podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Richard Harris, and I have a very special guest on today. We used to do a lot of Facebook videos together. It seems like ancient history at this point in time, but it was a, it was a lot of fun. And uh, I wanted to bring her on and talk about carnivore. So I want to introduce my uh, good friend, Jill Samter. How are you today, Jill? I'm really good. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I brought you on one because you, for a person who doesn't have, you know, medical training outright, you're very knowledgeable about holistic health and about your body. And when you switched over to a carnivore plan, I thought, okay, this is perfect. Let me get someone on here who has done carnivore, is doing it and, and talk about it because it's something that you're seeing a lot more pop up in, in mainstream media and online. So the first question is, how did you transition into a carnivore plan and what brought about that transition? Well, I think first it's really important for your your listeners to understand that I was carnivore for three and a half years and I went from doing the, I mean, I was keto and I wanted to heal at a deeper level. As you guys understand from being my friend and being a part of my life, watching me as a ketogenic person, you knew that I was like, I would hit this level, but I never could get to the deeper level that I was looking for. And I started to hear about the zero carb living and I was like, hmm, what's zero carb living all about? And that's how I found carnivore. And then I started listening to Dr. Stock. Kevin Stock, Dr. Paul Saladino, Dr. Ken Burry started to really look at uh, Sally K. Norton and started to hear all these people talking about it and Maria Emmerich and her husband. So I did a little bit of research and thought, why not? I'll try it for myself because I want to go to that next level. And I feel like this might be the missing link for me. And at the same time, at that point when I was ketogenic, I was gaining all this weight and I was doing all the same things, which you and I totally believe in. Intermittent fasting, longer fasting, three-day fasting, five-day fasting, and it wasn't doing anything. So I knew something was wrong, but I didn't know what. So when I started the carnivore diet, I figured, well, I'll try for 30 days and see what happens. Within five days, all of the bloat in my stomach disappeared. And that was enough for me to know that I hit something that I needed to really dive into. And that's incredible. Yeah. And this is all about, there is no one size fits all for, for nutrition. So many times people think that, oh, you just have to do this and that, but we're all different. There's seven and a half billion people on this planet. We all have different genetics. And of course, one plan is not going to work for everyone. So in addition to what you've been feeling as far as your, your GI tract, how else has carnivore helped you? I'm 52 years old for all of you that are listening. And being a woman over 50, we have different hormone situations that happen. We're starting menopause, we're going through menopause, or we're finishing it in menopause in your 50s. And what many of you may not understand is that as you get over 45, your hormones are directly affected by your insulin resistance. And one of the reasons why I was so excited about the intermittent fasting and fasting was because I knew what it would do for that alone. And when I went carnivore, I didn't have to do the intermittent fasting at first. It wasn't even something I needed to think about because I wasn't hungry. So it was just a natural thing not to eat breakfast. Um, it made that switch super easy. And at the same time, what I started to notice was I had an interior energy, not just the kind where your brain doesn't feel foggy. I had like a physical energy about me. Um, I got stronger, literally, by the day I felt stronger. My muscle tone 
just appeared out of nowhere. And I'm not like a heavy gym person. I walk, I rebound. Um, I lift a little tiny bit of weights at home, but not really. And I just felt stronger and stronger inside, which was such an exciting thing. That's uh, incredible to hear. You know, a lot of people don't realize that some people are very sensitive to plant anti-nutrients. And it sounds funny to talk about, but I've talked about this before, that plants don't want to be eaten. Evolutionary over time, they've developed different mechanisms to make sure that they don't get eaten. One of those was phytoestrogens. These are estrogen-like molecules that were meant to sterilize species so they, they couldn't reproduce. Less the animal, less the plant got eaten. Some people are very sensitive to phytoestrogens. There are things like oxalates and phytates, which are our plant anti-nutrients. And they're meant to disrupt normal absorption of nutrients in the species that eat them so that they wouldn't eat them or that the species would be sicker, right? They wouldn't get all the nutrients that they needed. So they would stop reproducing. They'd stop eating them. They would be sick animals. So these are things that plants have evolved over time to fight off being eaten. Now, some people are very sensitive to these things. Some people aren't. And it seems like in your case, you were someone who was very sensitive to these plant anti-nutrients. Yes. Okay. So let's talk about that. So for me, I was a green smoothie guru. If you wanted to have a green smoothie, man, I could make you a good one. I had it every single day, had spinach and kale, and I would use a green powder in my smoothies. And every single day I was doing that. So if you want to look into that, spinach and kale are very high in oxalates. And on top of that, I was eating sweet potatoes, which is also a high oxalate food. And these oxalates, what they do, everybody, is they form crystals. You've heard people have, say, I have kidney stones, or you hear people talk about that they get a lot of bladder infections, or you'll hear people talk about serious GI tract issues. And the reason for that is because these oxalates are these little tiny crystals, and these little tiny crystals are like bad to the bone. They like literally go into your body and cause this acidic thing to happen and inflammation to happen for certain people. Not everybody will have that experience. What I was doing was just thinking I was doing all the right healthy things, right? Drinking green smoothies, we've been told is really good for you. However, for somebody like me, drinking green smoothies made my gut health even worse, made my inflammation worse, caused my thyroid to get all wacky again. And I had to literally go through a detox, Dr. Harris. So like after I was done being ketogenic and went carnivore, every single month, I'm into it 11 months now, and every single month I would have to deal with oxalate dumping and having to deal with these phytonutrients leaving my body. And I think it's really important for people to understand that these are things that aren't talked about in the medical community. They are now, but for the longest time, it wasn't something that you heard more about except for like people with kidney issues because you would have kidney stones from the crystals in their body. So, I mean, that's just something I think people could look into and, and learn a little bit about because I think it's really important. Yeah, absolutely. These uh, oxalates actually bind up minerals. So they're most notorious for binding up calcium. And unfortunately, most people don't get enough calcium in their nutrition plan, so that's a problem. They also bind up iron. Well, iron's also one of the top deficiencies in most people, uh, especially women. Iron deficiency is, is rampant. And then they bind other minerals as well. And so these crystals can cause inflammation, and you're also binding up key nutrients. That's the same thing with uh, the phytates. Phytates bind up minerals and other nutrients so they're not absorbed. So have you gotten to the point where you've added back any uh, fruits or vegetables into your nutrition plan? No, I I eat mushrooms. They're not to me like a vegetable, but I have mushrooms. Like I put them in a, my omelets and I'm not a dogmatic carnivore where you just need to live on red meat, red meat, red meat, red meat. So um, no, I've had a little bit of blueberries, but no, I really haven't. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how do you, do you feel okay when you eat the blueberries and eat the mushrooms? You've had no Fine. issues with those? Mm -hmm. mm -mm. Nothing. Okay. And, and that's similar to some of the other carnivores I know that they'll go carnivore for a period of time and then they'll slowly try to reintroduce certain types of foods. 
uh, foods that are mainly high in, in antioxidants and other phytonutrients like blueberries, blackberries, and some of the other berries, and then other uh, foods like mushrooms. You know, mushrooms have been used therapeutically for thousands of years. There's a lot of great components in mushrooms that are anti-inflammatory, help boost our immune system. They're one of the only food sources of vitamin D that you can get. There's a lot of beneficial effects there. Well, think about that. To think about why that is. Why are they so high in vitamin D? I think about it. They're in the ground and they're in the sunshine and they grow right after it rains. So they're taking in all the nutrients from the sun and passing it on to you. It's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're one of the healthiest foods that you can eat. Unfortunately, I don't like the texture. <laughs> so I, I take a mushroom extract, um, a, a six mushroom organic extract, just because I don't like the taste of mushrooms. My girlfriend loves mushrooms. We always have mushrooms in the house. I can do it if we cut them up small enough, all right, where I don't, I don't, I don't, I can't, I can't do the texture. I can't do it. I've tried. I just can't do it. So uh, if they're cut, if they're, if we, if we dice them up small enough, I'll do it. And I do do the mushroom extracts because it's, it is so beneficial. Yeah. I'm curious, are you planning to try and add anything back in the, in the near future? Or are you going to kind of cruise control where you are now? I feel so good. Legitimately. As a 52 year old woman, I feel so good. I have not so I lost 45 pounds, by the way, from living this way and eating this way, which is incredible. And I've kept it off. I'm back down to my size and clothes that I was in high school, which I want everybody to hear is pretty incredible to stay there, right? We've been in this quarantine thing and I'm still at the exact same place. I've not gained any weight. And no, I really don't miss it. I don't miss it. I've, I've come up with incredible recipes that are great and I make homemade ice cream that's carnivore and I make homemade you know, um, uh, waffles that are so good. And I have so many recipes that I've created. The food is so delicious. I never feel deprived and I never want to be sick again. So for me, it's more of a like, eh, I'm not really interested in like rocking the boat again. Fair enough. Carnivore waffles. How do you make carnivore waffles? Oh, they're good. <laughs> Eggs and heavy whipping cream. And I use a whey protein powder that has maybe two carbs in it for a scoop. And I just do salt and a tiny little bit of um, maple extract, maybe like a quarter teaspoon and whip that up, put it into my waffle maker. It's insane. They're incredible. Oh, wow. I use it for tuna fish. I use it for like, like a tuna sandwich. I use it for a burger bun. That's my burger bun. They're incredible. Hmm. Interesting. So let's uh, let's talk about some of the foods that you you eat. What's a normal day look like uh, for you on the carnivore plan? Okay, so for me personally, I go through days where I have two steaks a day, ribeye, or I'll have a strip steak, or I'll have a beef tenderloin, um, or I'll have a day where I have two hamburgers in the morning, usually around eleven o'clock, and in the evening I'll have a ribeye. Other days I have, I'm a chicken wing snob. I make the best air fried chicken wings ever. So I have, I use an air fryer um, and I'll have chicken wings because I just love them. I love scallops and bacon. Um, I, I make an incredible omelet. Like I'm a good cook. So like I like to cook. So I make an incredible omelet with just eggs and all the meats in it that I want in there. A little bit of cheese. I can do dairy. That was another thing that carnivore showed me. I wasn't sensitive to dairy all those years. It was actually all the phytonutrients that were causing me a problem. So I do eat dairy. Um, and the other thing that I really love is I make brisket and roast because they're number one, they're inexpensive and you get a lot out of it and it's super easy. So that's basically what I'm eating. Yeah, let's uh, uh, go back to the dairy thing because I think that dairy gets unfairly vilified and some people are like, well, I don't eat dairy. Why? Because dairy is bad for you. I'm like, okay, did you have any problems eating dairy? No. Then how is dairy bad for you? There's a big difference between skim milk and a uh, full fat milk from organic cows. That's a big, big difference. And that full fat milk actually has all the nutrients, has the good fats that our bodies need. It's not a processed derivative of milk or I don't even like to think of skim milk as milk. It's a milk byproduct. Exactly. There's also a lot of good benefit to dairy if you're dairy tolerant. It's one of the best sources of calcium in our nutrition plans. 
vitamin K2, which is very important. Deficiencies in K2 are rampant and K2 is necessary for vitamin D to work on our bones. It's also necessary for making sure that our blood is able to clot when it needs to clot. It's also uh, important for uh, the immune system as well. So there's a lot of great things in dairy and they're the major sources of these nutrients in our current nutrition plants, mainly calcium and mainly vitamin K2. But of course, like everything else, there are people who are dairy sensitive. I'm not dairy sensitive. I'm lucky. But if, if you shouldn't just completely vilify an entire food when it's the processing for a lot of it, and then there are a small segment of people who are sensitive. Let's talk about something that you just brought up. Let's talk about also butter, okay? Like healthy fats have been vilified. You and I have talked about this many times, but I think this is really important in this conversation, the context that we're talking about. So a lot of people like, you know, put down butter and don't want people to have butter. And I'm like, I eat almost half a stick a day. Like that's how much healthy fats I get into me every day because butter has so many important nutrients in it. And it's so incredible for your skin. It's important for your brain. As you and I both know, we want the body to produce its own ketones, right? We want to be in a ketogenic state at all times. And that's just basically the body having enough ketones and your body using them for energy, for that fuel source. Well, the reason that I eat a ribeye, the reason that I eat the foods they do, the reason that I have the heavy whipping cream and I eat the egg yolks is because I want to have my body constantly be in that ketogenic state. I don't blood test anymore. I did for the first six months. My ketone levels naturally, by the way, that I'm eating were so incredibly healthy and high that I knew that I was operating at the optimal level in my body. And what people don't realize is, is that butter, it's so incredibly healthy and healing for so many things. And it actually fights against inflammation for the people who can handle dairy. And some people who say they can't handle dairy, it's really that they haven't healed their gut yet. And once their gut gets healed, they can then have the dairy. So I tell people, you got to go through that period where the gut gets to be healed so that you can accept all the benefits. Like you said, the K2, just even that is incredible. Yeah, absolutely. And I see this a lot with people where you do an elimination diet at first, and then they're able, once the inflammation goes down, once the dysbiosis is cured, then they're actually able to tolerate foods that they weren't able to tolerate before. So that we, we see that classically. And I want to go back to what you mentioned about butter. I'm a huge grass-fed butter and ghee person. You know, if you are sensitive to the casein and whey and, and dairy, you can do ghee because it's just the butter fat. It doesn't have any of the butter proteins and it's actually more concentrated. So you get a higher source of the nutrients. Yep. But butter is a great source of vitamin A, a great source of vitamin E, does have a B12 and, and, and vitamin K in it, and also something called CLAs. CLAs are a saturated fat that's actually good for you. Bodybuilders have been taking this as a supplement for decades because it's anti-inflammatory. It's been shown to help with insulin resistance. It has uh, antioxidant properties as well because of the anti-inflammation. And it's also been shown to help with lean muscle mass. Mm -hmm. So, And that's a saturated fat. So not all saturated fats are bad, just like not all mono and polyunsaturated fats are good. Correct. So we have to take things in, in consideration here. And then another thing in, in butter is something called butyrate. And butyrate is one of my favorite molecules. It's a short chain fatty acid. And butyrate is amazing for the gut amazing. Our good gut bacteria make butyrate. It kills off bad gut bacteria because it's, it's, a, it's acidic and some of the bad bacteria can't tolerate that, uh, the, the acidity from the butyrate. It also is trophic to our gut cells and our gut cells take this in. And because it's a short chain fatty acid, it's similar to um, ketones, to beta hydroxybutyrate, right? And your body can make ketones can make the beta hydroxybutyrate out of butyrate and then use it for energy. So that's an incredible compound uh, that's in, in butter as well. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I absolutely love it. It's just so incredibly healthy. Um, and I, I, I love it. 
I pour the butter sauce for my steaks because I cook my steaks in butter and I pour that over my steak and eat it because I don't want to miss any of the nutrients that even cooked out of my steak from the fat that's being cooked. I don't want to miss any of it. And I eat everything that's in the pan. And a lot of times, especially if you're using the right types of, of meat, you know, sustainably raised, grass fed, grass finished, save the fat because that's good fat. Yeah. And then reuse it. So what are some carnivore resources? You had mentioned some of the people that you had you had followed at the beginning, but do you have any favorite resources for people who are interested in, in pursuing this type of nutrition plan? Absolutely. So I created a guide. It's 70 pages and it's for 30 days of success to get you started. It has everything in it that I wish I would have known. So I wrote this 70 page guide and it's on my website. You guys can get it super easy, jill-samter.com. You'll see it. The other thing is, is that there's really good YouTube channels out there. You can watch Dr. Ken Burry. He's still living it. You can watch Craig and Maria Emmerich. You can watch um, Dr. Paul Saladino. And these are people who are living it. These aren't people who are just talking about it. They're truly living this lifestyle. And you get to hear from them medically and also people who have just healed their bodies by using the carnivore diet, um, how that really helps you. And I think one of the things that's a great resource for women that are listening, especially everybody who's over 50, I have a YouTube channel, um, selfless plug here just for a second, because it's really helped people. I've interviewed a lot of women and they get to share their story. It's an incredible resource because it helps give you the, I think the encouragement that you need and also what is it like for other people, not just, you know, medically, what is it good for? Oh, that's incredible. Thank you for those resources. Now, as we wrap up, um, I want to ask this because, you know, there are some nutrient deficiencies that you can get when you categorically exclude any type of, of food. It, ma- it makes it a little bit harder to make sure you're, you're covered. So are there any supplements that you're taking in particular to help bridge those gaps? So for me personally, I use Redmond's Real Salt to make sure I get all the minerals that I need. So I have enough of that every single day. Anybody who's on a low carb, zero carb diet needs to have healthy salts. I don't believe in the dogma that you don't need it. Um, And I take a little bit of iodine every day. I take one drop of iodine in water every single day. Some people take up to three drops a day. I take one a day. And I take vitamin C, um, not because of scurvy or any of the fears that you hear people say, Just because it's really good for your immune system. It's just a very healthy, um, I personally believe that as you get older, it's just a really good, healthy thing to add into what I'm doing naturally. And from the fact that I eat so many different forms of animal protein, Dr. Harris, I don't really feel like there's a missing supplement that I really do need. Now, I'm not an organ meat eater very often. So I do take um, grass fed, organic supplements that are whether it's the kidney or the heart the liver i'll take something like that every once in a while but i don't do them all the time here's why i think it's important that people understand that you need b vitamins and if you're not eating full head to tail of the animal you're not getting all the b vitamins you need and that's why the supplementation is good for you yeah, absolutely. I, I covered that uh, fact in my nutrient deficiencies uh, podcast is that a lot of people who do do carnivore end up either eating organ meat if they like to eat organ meat or they supplement whole organ supplements because you can get a lot of those nutrients that from uh, plants through the animal by eating organ meat, you know, especially liver, kidney, uh, I know heart and I know thymus are are the, the big ones that are, are, are popular for, for people. And then people who aren't carnivore too still recommend eating organ meats because, again, you're still getting that full spectrum. You know, that, uh, to be honest, that's the one part of my nutrition plan where, where I'm lacking. And I think going forward, I am going to start taking maybe two times a week, something like that, uh, some organ meat supplements because I've tried liver and kidney and heart and uh, I just, I I can't do it. I can't do it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I've eaten it. I make it and I eat it. It's just, I don't enjoy it enough to have it enough. That's why the supplement's great. Gotcha. Well, thank you so much for coming on here. I think this has been a lot of really great information for the people who wanted to do carnivore. And, you know, my name of the game is I'm not one specific type of plan. Uh, I'm not, oh, you have to be 
paleo, you have to be keto, you have to be vegan, you have to be carnivore. I'm not one of those type of people. I think that you have to find what works best for you. There's a, a nutrient plan that's that works best for your genetics, your environment, your situation. It may take some, a little bit of experimentation to find it. But what I'm really trying to do is if you're doing these types of plans, that you do them safely. That's right. And do them with all the information you need to, to make sure that you don't run into some of these problems. If they do jump into carnivore, they can jump in safely. I agree. And thank you for having me. I just want to end with one final note to everybody out there. I can't agree more that there's not one diet for everybody. Just because this worked for me doesn't mean that it'll necessarily work for you. I think that you have to find what's going to be optimally healthy for your body and then do it. We both know and we both preach standard American diet is not where it's at. And you need to make sure that you have enough of the healthy fats and you need enough of the healthy proteins to be to to do what your body needs to do. And it's very hard to do that with certain ways of eating. And I just think it's really great that you, you know, allow your listeners to get all this information. So thank you again for having me on. You're welcome. Um, how will people find you if they want to check out your resources? I know you gave your website earlier, uh, but what about your YouTube channel? So my YouTube channel is just Jill Samter and you'll be able to find me there and on Instagram and on Facebook. So it's just my name. All right. Perfect. Well, thank you guys for tuning in this week's episode. And to keep things fair, I will be bringing on a, a, a friend of mine who is vegan and another friend who is who is straight keto. So, you know, like I said, we're, we're, we're in totality trying to just help out as many people as we can. So thank you again, Jill. And to all my listeners, I hope you have a blessed day. Thank you for listening to the Strive for Great Health podcast with Dr. Richard Harris. If you'd like to support the podcast, you can do so by becoming an insider. Insiders get early access to episodes, behind-the-scenes information, take-home points, and links to the articles and supplements mentioned in each podcast. Also, you get discounts on our wellness programs and one-on-one consults. To become an insider, head to theghwellness.com backslash podcast and click the green button to become an insider. If you enjoyed the episode, please rate and review on your preferred podcast listening platform.